Hey everyone, it's Dilly here from New Healthcare. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I am working from home today, so uh, this will be done. And if you hear any background noises, I'm very sorry. Um, I live on the main street, so you can pretty much hear everything in the background. So we're going to start in about a minute or so to wait for a few people to join in. Um, if there's any questions in the meantime, just uh, add them into the chat and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, looking forward to doing this uh, webinar and it will be recorded so you can go back and watch it as many times as you like. Right, so I think we will get started. Give me one second just to move everything around. Can never get technology to stay so many pretty buttons. Cool. Yes, there, um, someone just asked if there's going to be a slide deck to download. Yes, there will be. After the webinar, all the slides, all the research, everything that I've talked about today will all be be shared in the background. Um, so don't worry, just sit back, get a notepad, enjoy your coffees and teas or whatever you're drinking and uh, we'll go through everything. And what I'll be doing is at the end of the talk, I will answer any questions live. I'll do my best to get back to anyone, but if there's anything I, I do miss, you can just uh, email me back. Right, let's get started. So what's our agenda today? Our agenda today is discussing who, who we are. You must all run the, I mean, some of them, you have the unfortunate time of talking to me, but you should know that who, who the company is. We're going to talk about histamine and why it's amazing. We're going to talk about why too much histamine is the problem and why it actually should be called histamine overload and not this famous histamine intolerance that we've all, all known. And at the end of it, I'm going to give you some, what I would say, game-changing protocols. Now, I'm not biased. I am not biased because it's it's not because I just work for the company, but it's because I've tried the protocols myself. Um, we've got a lot of people trying our protocols and they are very, very effective. And at the end, as you can see with my great photo, the Q&A will be with me. Um, I'm one of the product experts. I've been you know, in the industry for the past nearly 10 years now, and I've been working for Nuva Healthcare from day one because I'm one of the founders from it. And we've actually been going since 2014. So we've actually been, we launched Toxic Prevent and we've got other brands that we've launched. And we are currently about to go for accreditation for ISO 13845 and 9001. And um, this won't much mean much to many people, but what, what it mean, means is that we've got a, a great quality management system. So every one of our products can be tracked. It's all part of how, why our products are medical devices and why we have a lot of research and efficacy behind our products. Um, some may not know this, but we've also been moving into the traditional herbal remedy market. So THRs are things like Calms tablets or Avogel. They have a lot of uh, herbal remedies. We're about to launch our first one, hopefully in October this year, called Sodorma, which is for anxiety. It's a licensed medication, well, licensed medical um herbal remedy, which can actually support with anxiety. We've done a lot of uh, R&D in things like H, H. pylori. We've got five separate clinical trials on H. pylori for one of our products, Pylopass. We've just recently published a study on diabetic foot syndrome, and we're looking at leg ulcers and how to treat leg ulcers. And our third one is our vitamin D. So we've teamed up with one in the universities, which is Cheshire. And we're actually looking at the upper level limit of vitamin D and vitamin D with pregnancy to see if we can um, increase the actual dosage of it. And if many of you may know, we offer vitamin D testing. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, I put at the end that we, we should have called ourselves Mavericks. I say this because we're not your normal healthcare company. We don't kind of like bring out any sort of generic products. We aim to get the best of the best. And we try and test 
everything that we possibly can. And I know a lot of the practitioners here, practitioners here like me, are guinea pigs. We like to be guinea pigs on ourselves. And this is what we've done with our products. We've not just tried them ourselves. We've tried them with hundreds of, hundreds of people across the world. So we've got four main brands. The first one's Toxparent, which is why you guys are all here today, which is a binder for histamine, heavy metals, and ammonium, and other biogenic means. We've got Dolivant, which has got a 130 patient clinical trial on migraines. We have our 15 minute vitamin D test kit. And our last one is Pilot Pass, which is proven to remove H. pylori. But I'm not going to go too much into this right now. So let's get started. Histamine. Ooh, histamine. Gotta love it. It's one of the most, uh, as I say, talked about around topics at the moment. But a lot of people have, you know, a lot of times we go on social media or we talk to experts and a lot of people will talk about food intolerances or they'll talk about, you know, restricting foods. Now, histamine is quite inter interesting because it's produced by the body naturally. And you've got this image here of mass cell degradation. And it's quite interesting. One of the big things that I get asked and talked about is mast cells. And a lot of people will say to me, they'll go, well, I've been diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome. And it's very hard to test for mast cells. There is a way of doing it, but a lot of people, they don't realize that it's not mast cell activation they have. It's actually an overload of histamine. And the way that mast cells and histamine and allergens work is this. So you have your resting mast cell and these mast cells are located all around the body. They're in our immune cells, they're in our, in our graphic cells, they're in our sensory nerves, they're around our heart. And what will happen is our body, uh, our immune system releases IgE. Now, IgE are these little antennas, and what they do is they sit on top of the mast cells, and they actually notify the mast cell that there's like a breach, or should we say, you know, like there's an allergen in there. If you uh, if you remember COVID, which is probably a distant memory now, in in, in my mind, some ways, um, you'll see that people like you know were exposed to the virus, and we we created antibodies to fight against it. It's the same with vaccinations. When we took vaccinations in, the it, the body created antibodies to fight. The virus. Now, what happens is when when any type of virus or allergen like hay fever that many, many people have comes into contact with IgE, because the antibodies know recognizes this this allergen, it will activate the mast cell, which degranulates and which creates inflammation. And as that mast cell degranulates and removes all those toxicities, it releases histamine alongside cytokines and other, other chemicals. And as it degranulates with that histamine, that histamine creates inflammation. But what it, what's interesting is histamine is a neurotransmitter. That's why when we have a histamine release, we have symptoms of histamine. And the interesting thing with histamine as a neurotransmitter is most people talk about histamine. But what they forget to talk about and what I'm going to teach you today is about histamine receptors, of which you have four. Now, these four histamine receptors are very, very, very interesting. They're located in all different parts of the body. You have your H1, H2, H3, and H4. And what happens is histamine, histamine as it travels through the body, it will attach itself to that receptor. And when it attaches to that receptor, this is what triggers that histamine response. So depending on which receptor it triggers to is depending on which histamine symptom or side effect you will have. And so this is why I put at the end of this, you're not actually sensitive to histamine, you just have too much histamine. And, and that's it, you literally have too much histamine in the body. So my biggest question is, how can you be intolerant to something your body naturally produces? it doesn't make sense. So when people use the word histamine intolerance, you know, when I first started many, many years ago, even I would use that term, but I kept thinking like, well, hold up, your body naturally produces. How can you be intolerant to it if it's naturally in our body? And this is kind of where it led me to. And what I started looking at was histamine and how it worked in the system. And I thought, hold up, histamines in food and people keep saying to me, oh, you know, this food is bad or you shouldn't eat this food. If coffee, cheese, wine and bread was bad, I think most of us Brits and French, the Italians, you know, which is part of our staple diet, we'd already be dead. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. How can these foods be bad? And histamine can't be bad because our body naturally produces it. 
And these foods are all, you know, histamine is all actually part of these foods. And the reason why it's part of these foods is because of a process called decarboxylation. And that's where the amino acids are formed during fermentation. And that histamine, alongside other things like putrescine and, and cadrovine and tyramine, are actually what creates that taste and smell. So that cup of coffee or that piece of meat or that wine you're drinking, histamine is actually part of that fermentation process. So it is needed. And so as we kind of got to this, you know, this point of where we started looking at histamine, I kept thinking, well, hold up, it's not the food, it's not the food, it can't be the food. And if you go onto Google, the biggest searches are what foods are high in histamine? And I would get asked these questions as people say, Dilly, you know, if um, what, what food should I take out of my diet? And then the other question that people asked was, well, hold up. I was completely fine two years ago. I, you know, I didn't have any issues eating these histamine foods. Why have I suddenly got, am I reacting now? And that's because histamine is building up over time. And the third question is, is you must have a lot of clients who are taking antihistamines. I've personally taken quite a few antihistamines when I had my urticaria, which I've now treated. And it's very, very interesting because antihistamines can actually be prescribed incorrectly, which I'll explain shortly. And then a lot of people would ask, why is my antihistamine not working? And I got all these questions and I would, you know, over my nine years or 10 years of researching, and I saw all these questions. But then it hit me last year. I was asking the wrong question. The question that we should be asking is which histamine receptor is being triggered? So let's talk histamine receptors. As I mentioned before, you've got four histamine receptors. You have your H1, which is located in your skin and blood vessels. If anyone's experiencing hay fever now, that's the receptor that's being triggered. You have your H2 receptor, which is located in your stomach, in your intestinal cells. It's actually what controls acid. So do you know when people get a lot of acid reflux when they eat certain foods? That's because the H2 receptor is being triggered. You have your H3 which controls your central nervous system. For those that suffer from anxiety or stress, that's because histamine triggers this specific receptor. And when it triggers this receptor, this is what releases the, the, the anxiety because of the increase in cortisol. And then you have your histamine H4 receptor. The H4 receptor has only recently been discovered. It's about, about 20 odd years ago. I use the term recent because it does seem like it was, it's not really looked at much. And that's part of our inflammatory response. It's one of the main receptors that's been triggered, especially when people have asthma. And so when you look at these receptors, they all have their own function in the body. And the way it works is that when histamine is released in the system, it doesn't matter where it goes in the body, once it attaches to that receptor, that's the symptom that you'll get. And so as I started looking at these receptors, I started looking at the different antihistamines. And um, it's kind of the, one of the reasons why I called this webinar antihistamine intolerance, because the thing is, you look at the antihistamines and I, when I personally took antihistamines, when I used to have suffered from really severe urticaria, my GP recommended cetrazine hydrochloride. And I remember when I took it, I just felt really, really drowsy. And I just felt lethargic and really run down. And I didn't realize that these first gen antihistamines, what was happening, was they weren't just turning off your H1 receptor. They were turning off your H2 and your H3. And when you actually turn off your H3 receptor, your, which is located in your central nervous system, a histamine actually attaches to this specific receptor and actually is what wakes us up. So do you know how antihistamines now have, have drowsy and don't operate heavy machinery? That's because when they turn off the H3 receptor and the histamine can't attach to it, that means that you actually can't wake up. So you start to feel tired because as the body's histamine drops down, you start to feel more and more sleepy, hence why they're drowsy. And so when I looked at these antihistamines, I realized that, that if you were taking cetrine hydrochloride, let's say for asthma or for pollen season, what if you turned off the H1 receptor? It doesn't automatically say, hold up, you've turned off the H1 receptor. I'm going to stop producing histamine or the histamine is suddenly going to disappear. What's going to happen is the histamine is going to circulate. And as it circulates, it's going to, it's going to attach to another receptor. So you might have helped your allergies, but you might trigger acid reflux. You might have you know, done something for acid reflux, but you might have triggered anxiety. So what I say, it's like a domino effect. 
And this domino effect is what causes these histamine issues. So taking antihistamines, though they are beneficial, and please don't get me wrong, they are beneficial because of a lot of people when they have acute reactions, they can be very, very helpful. But the, the issue with the antihistamine, the problem is, is that histamine doesn't just disappear. Now, you have your HNMT and your diamine oxidase to help de detox them. But if you've got a genetic disorder where you can't break them down or they're already overtaxed and overworked because of the amount of histamine in your body, that histamine is just going to flow and that's going to create that histamine bucket. And the reason why I put this image here, which is the alpha, beta, delta, gamma, this is one of the main areas that are being researched now because there's four nerves that are sitting in the system and not many people actually understand or know and even researchers who are looking at it can't work out you know why people get certain neurotic pains and nerve pains so it's just a bit of information if people are interested in learning a bit more about it so you look at histamine and you can see, you've probably seen this image quite a lot. I think a lot of uh, different people will use it, but you can just see the amount of things that histamine is actually linked to. You know, anaphylaxis, which we, we all know, you've got diarrhea, stomachache, cramps, menopause. What happens when the estrogen uh, de decreases? It increases histamine, or if it increases, it increases histamine. So we know that it affects our hormones. It affects things like headaches, why we get vertigo, tinnitus, um, urticaria, you've got acid reflux, you can just see how much of an impact histamine has on our body. So once again, how can it be bad? Because it has so many beneficial aspects in the system. So then this brings me to this famous, famous word that I was using, which is the histamine bucket. We've all heard of the histamine bucket. And if you if you haven't, I'm, I'm be quite surprised. And as I was saying before, one of the main questions that people ask is, um, you know, what diet should I go on to soothe, you know, my histamine intolerance or histamine overload? And the thing is, there are many diets out there and everyone has their good things and their bad things. But the thing with histamine tolerance is diet doesn't soothe, you know, doesn't fix anything. If you take out those food groups and you're taking other foods in, that's simply taking away the problem because the histamine just doesn't disappear. The histamine needs to be pulled out and detoxed. And that's where the issue lies. Now, what with histamine, as I said before, it's creating an irritation and inflammation. So we're going to look at what is a leaky gut. And it's, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people will, you know, talk about leaky gut and talk about things like glucosamine sulfate, um, NAC, vitamin C, and all those beneficial products. And people look at probiotics and looking at the gut barrier. And so I'm going to explain a bit of how histamine and leaky gut are interlinked and how actually, you know, detoxing histamine can actually reverse a leaky gut. So if you look at the villi in the, the middle, sorry, in the intestinal tract, it looks a bit like this. You know, nutrients kind of come across, attached to the milieu, and it gets absorbed into the test intestines, into the bloodstream and pass straight through. And this is what a normal, healthy gut would look like. Now, what will happen is as the body is exposed to more and more food intolerances, as we as we call them, as it's more becomes more and more intolerant, what will happen is the immune system goes into goes overreactive, and the IgE is sitting there thinking, oh, these are this is bad. I can't eat this. I can't tolerate this. And so, what the immune system does is it starts to release histamine, and what histamine does is create inflammation. And many of you have probably heard of the zonulin test for testing the leaky gut. And zonulin, as we can see, is this little, you know, this little white bit here is pushing through the intestinal lining. And what zonulin does is it sits between it sits between the intestinal barrier and it kind of pulls nutrients in. But because the body's overreactive, that histamine is being released. And what's happening is that and those tight junctions are being pushed further and further apart. And the reason why this is happening is because the the immune system is producing histamine to protect itself, but the zonin is going, I need my nutrients, I need my nutrients, I need my nutrients. And so it pushes the intestinal lining apart. And that's what creates that leaky gut. So what we did is we actually did a study on this. It was a 40 patient clinical trial using one of, the, one of our products. And we actually showed when you bound to histamine, and you took away things like ammonium and heavy metals and agenic amines like tyramine and putrazine and those toxins from the body, you can actually bind and detox the histamine and you can actually heal the intestinal lining. So these, this, this term of histamine intolerance can be completely treated and reversed. So the bit you've all been waiting for, 
the solution. So these are the solutions. Identify and remove the triggers. And this is really, really important. You should identify them. If you can do it via finding out, keeping a food diary, if you want to take a food intolerance test, you know, if you know that something like stress is triggering your histamine, there's there's ways of finding it out, but find them out first. Understand these, because once you can understand these, you need to then remove them. Now, this is the, the mistake that everyone makes. When they remove them, they never talk about putting them back in. But what we're going to do is give you the second and third step where you can actually put those foods back in. The second is detoxing histamine. Now, I'll explain tox friend shortly, but what we would do is follow our histamine tolerance protocol, which goes in, binds to the histamine, and removes it from the body. As you bind and detox histamine, you allow the immune system to go back into balance, and most importantly, you reduce inflammation. And then the third thing that we do is we reintroduce those foods. Those foods that used to trigger us and cause that inflammation in the first instance, all the symptoms we had, we need to start reintroducing them. But don't worry, if you find that you're still reacting to them, it's understandable, it can happen. Just stop taking them, continue on the protocol because it means that your histamine levels are, are more higher than they should be. And this just means that we need to take toxin a bit longer, reduce the histamine and then reintroduce those foods. And then step four, bragging rights. Yes, I will say this quite proudly. It's one of the best things about my job is when I get people who come back and they say they feel feel great. And I'm not joking. We've had people come back and drink red wine, eat cheese and everything. All I'm going to say is if you have face tolerance and you get treated, I expect an invitation to come eat cheese and drink red wine with you. So just a bit of background on our products. So Toxprint, start with this. So Toxprint contains something called zeolite clinoptilolite. And zeolite is something that many, many people know about. You've probably read them up on social media and there's a couple of companies who talk about zeolites, et cetera. And zeolites are, uh, are created from volcanic ash. But Toxprint is, the, is one of the only products in the world that's actually licensed as a medical device. And a medical device means that your product has to go through vigorous testing and research and proof, which is not just one off, but continuous. You have to do longitudinal studies. And what I mean is that every single year we are audited by the medical authorities to look at our products, how they're manufactured and the safety. And that, that word's important. Remember this safety. And what we do is we actually create something called MANC, which stands for Modified Activated Natural Clinoctololite. And what this means is that we put it through a special process, which first rips it apart and takes all of the toxins out. So what you're left with is a clean product. And then the next part is actually, which actually activates it. And the other way is we modify it. So we select specific particle sizes, which I'll explain next. And that medical device certificate has been so, so important for us. We were granted that in 2006. And the reason why we were granted that was that we showed that there was no direct side effects for taking toxicred. If there's any of you joined, joined me today, you're wearing glasses. When that, that's classed as a medical device, you put the glasses on and they help your IC. You take them off and they do nothing else. This is the same with toxicred. It's just going through the body, binding to the toxins and then pulling them out. And we keep a ratio of six particles of silica to one to two particles of aluminium. The actual particles are known as the luma silica. And this is one of the biggest controversies that's actually surrounded by zeolites, where people have talked about being um, poisoned by aluminium. We've actually proved this in longitudinal studies that we don't release any aluminium and we actually detox and remove it from the body. So it shows you that's the reason why we're classed as a medical device and why we've got the safety and efficacy and evidence that you can all see and view. Now, this is one of the studies that we did. So we had to prove what we move from the body. That's one of the big criteria for being a medical device. You have to show what you remove from the body. And so what we did is we actually created the gut and we did these longitudinal studies to look at what we removed from the system. And as you can see, things like histamine, aluminium, ammonium, mercury, lead, cesium, dimethamine, tyramine, all of these toxins we removed from the body. So particle size. 
This is the reason why we call it modified. So we only select particles between six and 10 microns. The reason why we do this is because we found that if you kept the particle between six and 10 microns, it would never enter the liver or kidneys to be processed. I'm gonna emphasize this. No zeolite in the market should ever enter the liver or kidneys to be processed because it's volcanic ash. Through evolution, our bodies are not able to break down rock, essentially. And if, there's, if this enters the liberal kidneys, there is no evidence that it can actually leave the body. And this was really, really important. That's something that we had to prove and show that we did. So we actually hold a patent for these sp specific particle sizes. And we actually preload the um, particle with magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium. And that's because it's, it goes through a process called ion exchange, where it releases these small amounts of minerals to bind to the toxins. And this is actually what creates our you know, our ingredient. And this is one of the longitudinal studies that we have to do. We did a study to show that when toxprint is taken in the system, that it simply passes out in the colon. And you can see that this, you can see in this um, x-ray scan with, um, it was attached to a radioactive isotope. And if you, any of you want to read the study, I'll um, share it with you. And you can see it travels through into the stomach, into the intestines, and then into the colon. So literally within 24 hours, it's completely bound and passed out through the body. So Toxprent actually just simply binds the toxins and removes them. It doesn't allow them to stay. So we've got the proof that it removes. The next part, the products. So one of the biggest questions we get asked is, uh, they go, people go, what the hell is the difference between the products? Like, you know, what, what, what products does what? I'm looking at these boxes and you, you can see that they look very medical. It's it's because it's a medical device and I wish we had more like, you know, uh, consumer friendly packaging, but it's because of that awesome medical device license we get packaging like this. So the difference between the sachets and the capsules is this. So the sachets work in the mouth and the stomach. They target the upper GI, even though they travel the intestines and the colon to be removed through the body. It it's um, much more effective in the upper GI. Because of the amount of toxins you have in the upper GI, it's not as effective in the intestines as the colon. Whereas the capsules, whether it's the MediPure or the MediAcute, the, the difference between these two products is the fact that they are the capsules enteric coated. So it bypasses the stomach to work in the intestine and the colon, where it goes in, binds the toxins and pulls them out. This is the difference between the two products. And it's why some of our protocols utilize both, because you know, as we all know, the GI tract starts from the mouth all the way to the anus. So we need to make sure that you're detoxing the entire GI tract. The difference between the MediPure and the MediAcute, you know, these two, is that the MediAcute is a blend of the MANC, which is the active ingredient toxin in the toxin products, blended with colostrum. And the reason why we put colostrum in there is because of its ability to um, rebalance the immune system. And the colostrum that we use comes from like specific cows that are medical grade. And what we mean is that they don't do anything but, uh, but um, go to the, into the intestines, deposit that colostrum and balance the immune system. Whereas a tox brain goes in, binds to the histamine and pulls it out. And the last product is our toothpaste. Our toothpaste is pretty awesome. It's something that we developed uh, recently. And it's got the exact same ingredient as the um, Toxprin product, which is the MANC. And what that does is actually binds to toxins in the mouth. And as, as you may have heard, the, the, the term that's been coined is leaky mouth. What this does, it goes in and it binds to the toxins in the mouth and removes them. So if there's any sorts of inflammation, receding gums, or any sorts of bleeding mouth, this can go in and bind to it and remove it. And it's also fluoride three and menthol three. At the bottom of this, you can see that there's different conditions that we work on. Now, for anyone that's interested, or I should say, you probably all would be interested, at the end of this presentation, I will share you with our protocol guide. We have a guide of all the conditions that we work on, and we actually provide a um, provide all the protocols. Right, it's mean Collins protocol, my favourite recommended protocol, and one of our you know, one of our most well-known protocols. So it, it's just the two products, the MediPure and the MediPlus. And we recommend both these products because they target the histamine in the entire digestive tract. So the way this protocol works is you simply take three MediPure capsules one hour before breakfast, and you take a further three capsules two hours after your evening meal with one sachet of Toxaprevent. 
Now, the reason why we recommend a protocol like this is because the further you take tox away from food, the, the more it will detox histamine in the digestive tract rather than histamine or toxicity from the food. So this is why it's very, very important to take them in this, you know, away from food. The other reason is the fact that protein from food can actually interfere with the particle. It can attach to the particle and stop it from working. And the reason why we say to use the sachet and the capsule at night is because the um, because of your circadian rhythm. So as you sleep, your body detoxes and your body releases histamine. And it's really, really important to have that last dose at nighttime where it's away from food. And that's why we say two hours afterwards, because that gives you a good amount of time for your body to digest. And what that will do is as you're sleeping, it will bind to the toxins and pull them out. Now, with every dose of Toxbren, whether it's three capsules or one sachet, you always need to have 300 milliliters of water. But in the evening, that is a lot of water to take. That's nearly, you know, just over half a liter. And I know that's a lot of water for a lot of people. But if you find that you, um, sorry, if you, if you find that you can't drink that much water, all I suggest is take it with less water, but keep hydrated throughout the day. And then make sure when you wake up, you drink a big glass of water to help it transport the system. Because when you add that product into water, you will see it, it doesn't dissolve. It uses water to transport through the system. The next protocol. The next protocol is our H. pylori protocol. I'm only going to do our top three today, just so, and because I want to give some time for Q&A today as well. So many of you may know that we um, work on H. pylori. We have a five-day protocol that binds in, basically binds the ammonium and histamine that's produced by the bacteria. And then we have our product Pylopass, which has five separate trials on it, which shows that it can bind to the bacteria and remove it from the stomach. So I won't go for this protocol, but I'm going to explain the mechanism or mode of action for it. So one of the unique things many, many years ago we were looking at was H. pylori. And as many of you know, a lot of people can, you know, get the, the bacteria. In my experience, what I always say to our practitioners is make sure that if you are going to uh, use the protocol that the person's symptomatic, a lot of people can test for H. pylori, but not be symptomatic because H. pylori is a lot of our different is in a lot of people's stomachs, but a lot of people don't have the active strains. There's different strains of H. pylori, and I believe out of the seven, two are the most that are prominent where they come up in, you know, with, with the gastritis that people feel. And what this protocol does, it contains the sachets and pylopass at the start. And what the Toxic Medi Plus sachets do is they bind to the ammonium and histamine produced by the bacteria. So what H. pylori does to to protect itself from stomach acid, it basically increases histamine. And what, hist what it, like, it does, it's called a urease enzyme excreting bacteria. So what it does is it gets urea, divides it into ammonia to carbon dioxide. And with that ammonium, ammonia, it creates ammonium, which then it uses as a protective shield. So what Toxprint does over that five days is it binds to that protective shield and rips it off, which allows the gastric acid to naturally destroy the H. pylori. And the second thing is it removes this histamine. So all those symptoms that the person's feeling from having the bacteria, it removes this. Now, pylopass is very, very interesting. So we were looking at how, uh, like living bacteria, and this um, is a strain of Lactobacillus ruteri. And what we found was that this specific strain called DSM1764A, it emits a glycoprotein. And H. pylori, talk, we talk about the, the protective um, what the word is now the, the h pylori not the shield oh memory's gone so what h pylori does it is it emits a protein and that protein that it creates is actually another mechanism that's it biofilm how did i forget that <laughs> getting old so one of the one of the parts of the biofilm is a protein and the glycoprotein from pylopass actually is attracted to that protein produced by H. pylori. And what happens is it goes to the H. pylori and it hooks it because it's attracted to that, to that protein. And as it hooks onto it, it then pulls it out from the stomach. And we've done five separate trials. Our most recent one where we actually used it part of triple therapy. And we've showed that actually using pylopass alongside the um, in, alongside triple therapy, you can actually reduce H. pylori significantly in the, in the gut by over 70%. So it's, it's quite significant. 
And then after that five day cleanse, you then have a 30 day post cleanse. And all that is, is a mixture of the sashes and the capsules. It follows the same histamine tox protocol, but only for one month. And all that does is just flush out all of that histamine and the ammonium, because ammonium is very toxic to the body. Heavy metal protocol. So this is our last protocol, protocol today. Um, the, the reason why we, uh, so one of the, where we first started many, many years ago in 2006 was in heavy metal detoxification. It wasn't until about a year after we discovered that we bound to histamine. And it was interesting. The reason why we discovered histamine was because when people were treating themselves for heavy metals or candida or looking at um, uh, looking at like things like leaky gut, we will be people coming back and saying, Hmm, my allergies are, are going down. And that's actually the reason why we actually discovered we bound to histamine. But one of the main protocols we do is heavy metal detoxification. And this protocol is slightly different from the histamine intolerance one. So this is the toxin ready pure, so the red box and the, the purple box. So we recommend taking two capsules 30 minutes before a meal. The reason being is it takes out heavy metals from the bile, which aids in digestion. When the pancreas and gallbladder release those enzymes to help with the digestion of, of fatty, uh, oh, sorry, of, of fat and carbohydrates and protein, a lot of the heavy metals are actually in there because the portal vein pushes it into the into the pancreas and gallbladder, which produces the enzymes. And normally, what will happen is they get removed from the body by the colon. But because of how the colon works, the colon just absorbs all those metals back in the system, so they're in circulation. But when you take the tox sprint half an hour before the food, and as you're cooking, your body's getting prepared to eat, what will happen is those heavy metals are released, tox sprint binds to them, and then when you pass stool, they're just passed out. So it's not reabsorbed by the colon. And that's why this protocol is so, so essential. And then we say take the sachets at nighttime before bed, because what will happen is that they will work alongside your circadian rhythm. So as your body naturally goes to that detox cycle, tox sprint's just going through and binding to the toxins. We recommend this protocol for, uh, for three months, you do both products for three months, then after three months, you pick one of the products and do it for a further three months. So that's our, our uh, heavy metal protocol. Right, FAQs and solutions. So I'm gonna kind of, I know there's gonna be a couple of questions after this, but I wanted to kind of give you the main questions a lot of people ask. So one of the big things that we get, we get, we, I get calls about basically, is people go, Dilly, my client's constipated or, or a client will ring up and say, I'm constipated. And um, it's a sign, and it's actually a good sign. It means the person's not drinking enough water, or they have low motility, or they need to increase their fiber. Now, I know a lot of practitioners will rec recommend things like psyllium husk and flaxseed and linseed, um, and they, these are brilliant. They are brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, things to help increase that fiber intake. But the problem is, you must remember that these fibers also require water, and toxparent requires water to transport through the body. And even though a lot of us do drink a lot of water, I mean, I'm guilty of it. You know, I preach about drinking water, but my God, I, you know, when I'm sat behind my desk and I'm working, I don't want to be running backwards to the toilet, so I won't drink enough. And so it is quite common that even though they're taking high fiber, that they can still be constipated. And that's because their body's not got enough water or it's not storing onto it. So one small little trick, you know, um, if you don't know already, I recommend to people that when they're drinking some warm water, they sprinkle a bit of sea salt into there and that will help the body retain that water. But we always recommend that if you are constipated, just increase the water a little bit, add some more fibrous fruits and veggies, and just keep doing that, and it will get better. It takes a little bit of time, but give it one or two days, and it will completely reset itself. Um, one of the biggest contraindications contra is that you must leave a gap of two hours between medication and toxin So you take your medication first, and then your toxin two hours afterwards. That's because toxin can actually bind to that medication. And the last bit is, these protocols, they're not set in stone. I get a lot of people who, and a lot of practitioners will say, oh, I want a bit of advice on my client and how they take the protocol. Please do this. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to send us your client's details. Oh, sorry, the client's medication and when they take them and when they eat their food. And we could build a protocol around that. But now that I've given you the tools to do this, you should be quite comfortable doing this. But don't think you can't change the protocols. Though these protocols are made by us, Feel free that if you know your client has to eat first thing in the morning and take the medication and they've got a big gap between their next round of medication to put the medication there, that will be completely fine to do. 
at the end of this, um, I'm going to send these out part of the slides. That's going to be the practitioner protocol guide, which has all the protocols that we talked about today listed in there, a copy of our medical device certificate, if anyone's interested in, in, in it, um, two clinical reports and longitudinal studies. One's on to show that toxprint has no impact on the body's natural vitamins, mineral supplements, like other binders, which we have to prove this part of our medical device license. We actually have to show that we don't interfere with the body's natural vitamins, mineral supplements, and it's why Toxprint can be used alongside other supplements. And then the other one is a longitudinal safety report looking at body toxicity and how we reduce it. And then all of these papers and all the information that I've talked about us in here, we can be at the end. And there you go. That's um, if you've all got your phones handy, I'm going to recommend. You just jump onto Instagram, type in Nuva Healthcare or New End School Healthcare and follow us. We do daily posting and we're gonna we do a lot of Instagram lives. Um, the next Instagram lives on leaky gut, I believe, and we're gonna look at questions and answers around leaky gut. We've got a new a couple of ones coming on vitamin D and then a migraine. And we also have a practitioner support group, which is just being built as we speak. So that's me done. And there is a practitioner account, by the way. Um, if you click on the, if you go onto the website and click on practitioner login, you can log in and see the website from there um, to get like your practitioner discounts and, you know, information and research behind it. Uh, yeah, right. I'm going to answer some Q&As. Q &A. Hello, Dr. So, the first question I got was, which toxin product would you use for an extremely reactive 18 or suffering with extremely inflamed oozing skin, especially on face steroid withdrawal? Brilliant question. So I would definitely recommend starting with one of the products, either the MediPure or the MediPlus. Because it's inflamed and irritated skin, you'd want to be a bit slow because as you start pulling out the toxicity, it could do it a lot quicker. But definitely... I would probably recommend the sachets, just doing one sachet at night time before bed. And the second is a Toxprint skin suspension. I sadly didn't mention this today. So the skin suspension is pretty awesome. I don't, I don't have one here. But what the skin suspension is, it's a mixture of the MANC with colloidal water. And what it does is the colloidal water, it opens up the pores of the skin and it allows a Toxprint to bind to histamine underneath the surface. And as it pulls the histamine out, it reduces that inflammation. Uh, so I'd recommend the Toxin Ready Plus sachets and the Toxin Skin Suspension. There is a video on our YouTube. Um, we have a lot of YouTube videos, videos, by the way, which explain histamine. So I would recommend subscribing to that. But we have a video showing how to use a suspension on the skin. But once you apply that, it literally pulls the histamine out. The next question is if you can um, use the heavy metal protocol for children. Now, with children, the youngest we've studied that we've done is for the ages of 12. And we haven't got underneath this. Now, a lot of our clinicians in Germany do recommend to children need the 12, but what they do is they half the dosage. They always just do half of it. With a lot more younger children, I'd say drop us an email and we'll have a chat with you about it because it'll be a bit more easy to kind of work out which way to do the protocol. But one of the more used products for children is the Halostop Tubules. It's a tubule sweet form of Toxprevent, which a lot of kids like, and that works in the upper GI tract. You can actually use that with younger children as well. The next question was, um, if one take Toxprevent for hay fever, which product should I take? And would I need to take my antihistamine with it? Oh, brilliant question. So uh, I recommend the MediAcute. The reason being is because it's got colostrum in there and colostrum, as we know, is an immune balancer. And alongside when you're going through pollen season and hay fever, this will go in and rebalance the immune system. But the toxprin, um, toxprin actually binds to the histamine. So it's doing a bit of the best of both worlds. But if you are going to do that, I'd also recommend taking the sachets because it will increase the dosage of toxprin to detox out that histamine quicker. Honestly, if you've got allergies, these two game changers. Um, and I always recommend to people try to go dairy free as much as possible during uh, pollen season. The reason being is that dairy creates mucus and that mucus attaches more pollen to it. So there are a couple of like tips that I can give for hay fever if you if you're interested. One would be keep your window shut at night because that's when pollen is will be coming in as you sleep. Second, make sure you shower 
the minute you get back in or just wash your face and hands because your pollen attaches to the skin. So as, even though we change our clothes, because pollen's on the skin, it can start to create those symptoms. The third is to keep your window shut. Sorry, keep, reason why to keep window shut in the bedroom is because pollen attaches to your, your bed, bed clothing. And the fourth thing is, um, I've lost the plot again. My God. I think this is old age. I don't know if this is old age or just, just me just remembering so many different things. I'll remember it will come back to me. But that, oh, sorry, use an air filter. I knew I'd remember it. So if you if you um, can get a an air filter, oh my God, it's amazing, especially for mold and mycotoxins. Oh, by the way, toxic binds to mold and mycotoxins as well. But um, yeah, use an air filter to purify the air around you. It really, really helps with the allergy season and make sure you're taking that sachet night before bed. So another practitioner question was, I had a few patients reacting to the MediPure caps, like a burning feeling. Tom to open up the capsule and take half in water. They still reacted. Should I have used a powder form of the acute ones? So that's interesting. What would happen is you wouldn't actually react to Toxprevent. And this is, this is a very valid question. Or it could be the cellulose and gel and gum on the capsule shell that they could be reacting to. But it wouldn't be the Toxprevent itself because the active ingredient is inert. And then because it's inert, it doesn't actually have an effect on the system. And because we bind to histamine, we remove that. So what I'd say in this case is if it is the actual capsule shell, you shouldn't open the capsule because the it's actually been sealed in a specific way so that it, it can pass the um, stomach, go past the stomach acid and work in the intestines and the colon. So if the client is reacting to the this capsule shell then I would just switch to the sachets and try that but most of the time most people don't react to the to the actual the, no, sorry no one will react to the product because the actual ingredients are not if you suspect histamine in migraine which product should you use so the two products I would recommend for histamine in migraine so this is a tough one so we did a lot of research in, in, in migraines. We're actually about to, fingers crossed, hopefully next year, we're running a study on migraine, one of our products, Dolivant. So migraine is quite interesting. There's, there's a lot of theories behind how migraine works. And some people think it's a deficiency of magnesium, riboflavin, and CoQ10, hence why we created Dolivant. And the other think it's to do with food intolerance and stress and histamine, because histamine gets on, when it gets onto the brain, or well, sorry, when it gets into the blood, it creates vasodilation. And that's where the blood vessels expand. And that expansion on the, on the brain is what creates pressure. And so I would recommend following the histamine intolerance protocol because it's difficult to say which product you would use. What I would do is detox that excess histamine, reduce that histamine overload. And as you reduce the histamine, those whenever the person eats certain foods or they get stressed, that histamine will decrease or the histamine reaction won't happen because the histamine levels are balanced and the diamine oxidase and the HNMT are supported in order to remove that histamine. That would be my, my solution for it. However, if they do have a mineral deficiency, and that was one of our what, what our clinical trial proved, was that migraine patients were were deficient in magnesium, riboflavin, and CoQ10, and we there was a lot of research on that. So we created a hundred and thirty patient hundred and thirty patient trial, and we showed that when you increase those minerals, the migraines actually de decreased by fifty percent. The next question was. With the heavy metal protocol, do you need to follow a specific diet? Nope. No, no, you don't need to follow any, 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 um, any uh, you don't need to follow any uh, specific diet with heavy metal. If you've got a diet in mind, please go for it. No issues on my tool. Um, yeah, no at all. The next question was, oh, someone just said I specialize in topical steroid or I love MediPure. Thank you. I like it too. Um, can using the histamine protocol or any protocol trigger worsening of symptoms, e.g. eczema, hay fever, before you get better? So that's a very good question. No, it won't worsen the symptoms because the actual ingredient, you know, doesn't do anything in the system. But what will happen is as your body starts to detox, you've got to remember this is coming into the system and the body's used to just recircling the histamine. And as it's recirculating, it's just causing the same symptoms. But as your body starts to detox and break it out, your body just goes, oh, there's something going on here. And it will start to release those toxins. Anything that's stored in the muscles or the tissue or in the fat will start to be released because 
because we're taking away that daily burden of toxins from the liver and kidneys, because you must remember the liver and kidneys are what daily process our toxins, because toxins are removing them from the GI tract and they're not being have to be broken down by the liver or kidneys, the body starts to go, ah, something's going on here. I can start detoxing more. And so it'll start to release those uh, toxins from the fat cells and the muscles and the tissues, which will then go to live in the kidneys to be pushed out into the gallbladder and into the pancreas and into the enzymes, which then go into the into the stomach and into the intestines, which then toxin binds to, hence the heavy metal protocol. So, and you know, the histamine protocol, but no, it won't worsen symptoms. It's, if you get like a, a detox crisis, which is quite, you know, something that people talk about quite a lot, it's not the toxin causing the detox crisis. And when people say, oh, my client's got um, having a detox crisis, I always say that's a really good sign. It means that your client's body is now adjusting to detoxing. And if this happens, don't worry, it's nothing to be worried about. Just keep drinking plenty of water, keep the protocol and keep consistent and you will get better. It lasts around about three to four days, but not everyone gets it. I, in my personal experience, about one in 10 people get that reaction, but than that, not really else. Um, so someone said a client has a food intolerance test. Could they start the protocol straight away? Yes, 100%. Literally, if you're, if you're taking out foods out of the person's diet, go for it. No issue at all. If you're working on their food intolerance test, that's completely fine. No problem. Just start putting the toxin in. It doesn't. It has no. Uh, has no. You know. Doesn't need to be specially promoted or anything. Just put it to the system. You can do it alongside any diet that you that you think is necessary. Uh, by the way, it works very good alongside keto diets. Um. Does does the heavy metal protocol pull metals out of tissue that it may lodged in? Yes. So it doesn't do it by going into the muscles or the tissues, because as I said before, zeolite should never enter the muscles or tissues or the liver and the kidneys. But the way it allows the toxins from the tissues and muscles to be released is via the liver or kidneys. You know, you've got the you've got the four separate detox pathways. I think it's um I can't remember the name of it's called again. See, once again, memory goes, it'll come, it'll come back to me in a second. But what will happen is as you improve the GI tract by pulling those daily toxins out, you then improve the liver and kidneys, and then you improve the blood vessels and the muscles and tissues. It's a cycle. So what you're doing is you're pulling the toxin out of the digestive tract, more are being circulated in, toxins pulling them out, more are being circulated in. So that's how it gets rid of the heavy metals from the lip, from the tissues and the muscles, but it does it in a safe way because it's not going in and just going, ooh, let me just grab everything, like like nano, not nanoparticles. They're not very good to use because you, you don't... Oh, by the way, this might be, you might find this interesting. I was talking to a professor at Birmingham, um, brilliant, she's, she specialised in nanoparticles, and we were, we were doing a, another study that I'm personally working on at the moment now, and um, she said to me that there's no evidence, and no evidence whatsoever, that nanoparticles, once they enter the, the body, that they actually are removed. It's one of the biggest downfalls of nanoparticles. There's no efficacy or evidence or proof to show that nanoparticles leave. Um, if you want to speak to the, the, the professor, sorry, she's bloody brilliant and I'll send you her details. She's, she's fantastic and I'm sure she'll love getting um, more questions about it. But yeah, so that's how it gets rid of heavy metals. Um, how long on average would it take for the histamine protocol to start working? Um, I'm starting with some of the protocol when he's currently suffering daily reactions. Ooh, it's that's a tough question so it's a question i get asked a lot most people within six weeks some people sooner some people longer it all depends on your histamine load all i can say to you is you will get better and it's just it's it's like um it's like going to the gym when you go to the gym the first time you go your muscles ache and you're training and you're like oh my god i don't want to do this it's the same with the histamine protocol as you keep doing it it starts to get better and better and better and it's the same with going to the gym same system you will get better it's just a cycle i can't say how long it will take but it will you know you will improve as you kind of reduce those histamine levels does the heavy metal protocol also work on microplastics and silicon move that with tissues yep it works on microplastics. Does your colostrum affect dairy allergy and tolerance sufferers? So that's a brilliant question. Um, so we use decasinated colostrum in the product. And what that means is, you know, colostrum has uh, two proteins, whey and, and casein. 
most people react to casein rather than whey. So we took out the, the casein. It's really hard to remove the whey protein from, from my understanding, but we've actually removed the casein protein. It depends on the individual, but you can just stick to the MediPure. It's, it's not going to be an issue at all. Um, so if the patient is lactose, has, has, has a problem with um, whey protein, then no, you, you can't use it. But if they're fine, if they have a reaction to casein, then you can use it. Do all the products bind to histamine and the list of heavy metals referenced in the bar chart in the other slide? Yep. So Toxbrent, there's nothing, like I said, all the products, doesn't matter which one you use, the active ingredient in all of the toxin products, even the, the Dentura Med toothpaste, and I'm going to use this. This is incredible. Um, it's I've not used any of the toothpaste, but this since the last like 16 or 17 months, but um, all the toothpaste, all the ingredient binds to histamine and heavy metals and ammonium and sulfur and mycotoxins and molds, they all bind to it. Um, if one member of couple has been diagnosed with H. pylori, should both be treated with the same protocol, even if one has not symptoms and not been tested? Yes. Oh my God, this is the best question. Thank you so much to Bogona for answering this question. This is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant point. So H. pylori, when you treat it and you get rid of it, um, you must remember H. pylori can be passed on just through the simple art of kissing someone or touching, preparing food and coughing on it or going to the toilet and someone not washing their hands. And yes, there are people in this world who still don't wash their hands. You think COVID would have taught them something, but honestly, they still haven't learned. It's disgusting. I've seen it. Um, but yeah, so you can simply, you can get rid of it, but then someone, your partner could like simply just kiss you when you could pass along the bacteria to the person and they can re-get it. It may not be straight away, but it can happen over time. You can use the H. pylori protocol on both of them, or what you could do is just use the pilopass and the sachets on a lower dosage. So just taking one sachet at nighttime before bed and two caps of the pilopass twice per day, which you can have with or without food. But yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. It's very, very helpful to treat the family as a whole. Thank you for that question, by the way. Uh, so really makes me happy that question does because I get asked it quite a lot. Um, Someone said, I'm not sure if I have a red face due to eczema or histamine overload. What are the signs I'm looking out for for histamine overload? It's uh, the, the signs are different because it all depends on which receptor is being triggered. And so in your case, it's probably going to be the H1 receptor, which is located in the skin. And eczema, as we know, is an immune response. It's the immune system being overreactive. So even if you follow the histamine tolerance protocol, it will reduce the irritation. And I'd also recommend using the detoxment skin suspension. But what I'd say is use it um, around about four to six weeks after taking the products internally, because when you've detoxed the digestive tract, you must remember your skin is one of your main areas of detoxification. So when the histamine and the toxins go on the skin, it's because your body's trying to push and detox them out. So we, know, we won't know if it's histamine overload or eczema, but we know that histamine will trigger the uh, immune system, sorry, the immune system will trigger histamine release, which will trigger the eczema and the, the itchy skin and the rashes. Um, it's very interesting, actually, that people talk about the skin as detoxification. It, you know, people forget that your skin is actually one of your largest organs of detoxification. And I always put it to people, like, it's when you go out and you have, like, a curry or something, and the next day you can smell it in your sweat. That's because your body's detoxing the, the herbs out of the system. And it's the same with histamine. And it's one of the things that I, you know, one of the studies that we did was on something called lymphedema. Um, if anyone knows what it is, it's when your muscles and tissues swell massively, um, they get water retention. And we actually showed that when you use a skin suspension on the lymphedema, on the inflamed and water retention skin, it would actually pull out the water pull out the histamine and reduce the inflammation. And so I always say, if you're doing like a heavy metal probe with the toxic skin suspension, I would apply it underneath the armpits and between the groin, because that's where your lymphatic system is most open to the skin. And as you kind of apply the suspension, it opens up the pores and it pulls the toxins through. So just something a bit, a bit of a toxic for thought, should we say? Um, what do I think about people taking DAO enzymes to help detox histamine? Yeah, no problem at all. It's uh, I, I've read the research on diamond oxidase. It's I know a lot of people rave about it. I know a lot of people don't rave about it. I've had people say that they're brilliant. I've had other people say it's it's uh, not helped at all. So um, yeah, completely fine. No, there's no type of supplements. 
And the next question was, can someone have it for severe nut allergy? No, a severe nut allergy, sorry, sorry we can't. Um, we, it, it's that's something to do with the genetics and the genet the way the body's made up of it. I know there are products and treatments coming out for nut allergy, but it's not something that we can support with, sorry. Um, are we accepting patients for our migraine trial? Not yet. I am working on it. It's a uh, it's in progress. I'm working with Dr. Dalson at the moment. He's a migraine specialist in Guildford. Um, he, he does all like, he talks, does a lot of our lectures and talks on migraine. And we're putting one on hopefully next month with him on migraine. So I'll, I'll share the details for that. But we're not accepting patients just yet. But I will let you, people know when it's out. Um, people are sometimes scared to take it for long periods of time. As on the box, it says take it for no more than one month. Oh, this is a really common question we get asked. The reason why the packaging says to take it for one month and then take a, a five day break or a week's break is because of our licensing. We have to put this on the packaging, but you've got to remember this is inert. It's not like a supplement where it's going in and it's, you know, increasing the body's nutrient deficiency um, or for, sorry, fixing of the nutrient deficiency. This is simply going and binding toxins. We have to put it on the packaging just for the um just for the licensing governing body. It's part of a licensing. We have to put it on there. Nothing we can do about it. Um, but I've been taking Toxprint for nine years. I've been off it for about six months now and I've been completely fine. I still eat cheese and I don't drink red wine, but I eat a lot of cheese and bread um, if anyone knows my diet. But um, yeah, completely, completely fine taking it long term. Um, no issues at all. Does the heavy metal protocol remove uranium? Yes, it does. We just haven't done uranium studies, but it does bind to uranium. We just didn't do a longitudinal study on it because it just it's not one of those things that a lot of people are exposed to. And it takes a lot of time to get the trials done. But yeah, it does take uranium. Um, what would be the best time to start the antihistamine protocol for someone with seasonal hay fever? Um, whenever, please just start it as soon as possible. It's not like an antihistamine where you need to start it um, a month before uh, before allergy season, because you need to build your tolerance up to it. With the the protocol, you can start it whenever. Um, we have a lot of people that when they're going out to eat certain meals, me myself personally, if I'm ever going out for a heavy meal, I'll keep some of the sachets in in my own pocket because they're only really tiny little things, and I literally mix it with a bit of water about half an hour or an hour before that meal, drink it, it binds the histamine in the in the actual meal. So that heaviness that we feel doesn't actually occur. There is a little bit of a trick, but I didn't tell you this. And so it's a bit of a secret, but a lot of people, and I'm not gonna name names, but when I've been to events, a lot of practitioners will take the sachets and when they're having their evening drinks, as we, you know, we all, we all, we're all on top to a drink once in a while, they'll stick a bit of sachet of the toxin into water and drink it because it binds to the ammonium and histamine produced by alcohol. And so it reduces the, the effects of the hangover the next day. But I didn't tell you that, but it's just a, it's something that people do. Um, and the last question is, do you have a cream or just a suspension? We don't have the skin salve at the moment. We're reformulating it, but we're trying to get it passed through our uh, governing body. So TV and Ryland have to approve it. And once they approve that they're happy with the formulation, then we can bring it onto the market. But the suspension is available. Um, that's just a, a treatment product. So yeah, right. That's all the questions answered. That is everything done. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, I will share the presentation. I'll share the slides and all the research papers. If there are any questions, please just drop us an email, which is info at nubahealthcare.com. And you're more than welcome to call up after this and ask questions. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely, lovely afternoon, or should we say sunny afternoon? Take care. Cut this off.